stub. Site light. This chapter, I'm going to talk about the site light. You're looking at it right here in this project. I know we have our own site light, and I know we did the LEDs for our site light. And it talks about the site light and the typical lights that we use for site light, guys. So a few, a few things I want to review. Some of it is going to be review for you. Um, if you guys remember last uh, last year, we talked about different types of lamps, from the incandescent lamps to fluorescent lamps to high intensity discharge lamps. And this year we used LEDs. I'll show you a couple of, of things about the LEDs. So we're going to talk about the lamp selection for the site light. Uh, illuminance, you guys are way above average in terms of calculating the illuminance. Illuminance, we do have a software that we use for illuminance, visual. Um, and we calculate the foot candle. We grab that fixture, we calculate the foot candle to give us the um, to give us the desired minimum foot candle for that building. So that's a, that's a big deal. Power limitation um, and power demand for the uh, for the site light guys. Um, when we go to com check. When you plug in your site light, they allow you a certain amount of watt per square foot for the parking lot to meet the com check requirement. So that's a, we do it in our project, we do it based on the com check, that particular one. Um, location of luminaires in the site. Talk a few things about this one and, um, and the control, control option. I'll say a few things about the control option. Your control option can go from a snap switch, minimum, all the way up to a magnetic contactor into a big fat contactor that turns th things on and off, uh, controlled via um, a lighting control system or via an occupant, an occupant system, so, um, uh, 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 astronomical clock or, um, or any other type of control system that you guys have. Okay, uh, three factors guys when we select the side light like you probably have figured out by now. The type of the lamp that you're going to be using, we decided first to use LEDs, LEDs, right? With the, in our project, we decided to use LEDs. Typically, typically high intensity discharge are for parking lot. LEDs are invading them. So typically this choice when you go is high intensity discharge. Um, metal halide, metal halide is your option of choice probably or high pressure sodium. Now, for our project, we decided to use LEDs. I'll show you the LEDs that we did. Um, so that's the lamp that, we, that you need to do. Um, color the lamp uh, creates, the color is a big deal, guys, uh, because you cannot, if you're putting a, a parking lot light, you might not be able to see your, your picture. So you need to have enough color discrimination in the fixture that you put so people can find their objects outside, especially parking lot. And um, our electricians need to be able to maintain these equipment. So if you put the best color rendering fixture and the best type of lamp, but it's high maintenance, it's going to cost. I, don't, I hate to go back to what we did, guys, in the, in the winter. We said the majority, the majority of the money spent on lights is basically the, the major portion of it is the operating of that fixture. The dollar that you pay for the kilowatt that you burn, number one. And number two, guys, is the maintenance. The maintenance over the life of the fixture. The maintenance as well as the operation, the kilowatt that you pay. So the more, the, the easier to maintain the fixture, the better the fixture will be. That's a big deal. You don't want to put a fixture that's high maintenance fixture. You keep changing the balance. You keep changing the lamps. You keep cleaning it. So that's a big deal. These are the three factors that you take into consideration when we do lamp selection. Any comments, any questions? Comments, questions about that. And you guys have done it with us. Control, in terms of lighting fixture, guys, right in here. So typically, you're going to have your base here uh, for parking lot, say, three feet. And right at the top of it, you're going to have, like you guys did, typically, you're going to have your tower in here. Um, and your fixture is going to be located here. This is typically, I would say, from 15 to 30 feet for parking lot, 15 to 30 feet. And you're going to have your lighting fixture right in here. That's typical. And typically when you install, you're going to have a little enclosure here. Nick, right here, a little enclosure where you can bring your conductors from underground coming in here to the enclosure. And you use them and you go all the way to lighting fixture. That's typical, guys, what we do. All the parking lot lights, typically you come with underground directly buried cable or conduit into the base. Above the base, you're going to have an enclosure where you can have access to the wires, you can connect them. And then 
Uh, here's the funny thing, guys. This con can you guys see this conductor could be number one odd? Number one odd. So this conductor, guys, can be one odd. Anybody can tell me why would conductor be directly buried or in conduit with one odd? That big. Both the job. So actually, from this side. You grab your conductor directly, just go all the way. This is still coming out in a conduit here into my panel. Here's my panel, and here's my overconduction device, and directly coming here. Okay, this is a 20 amp circuit. Check this a 20 amp circuit going into one knot because of what voltage drop. And when you come over here, do you think, Chris, do you think this should be a one knot too going to the fixture? No. This is typically number 12, two con three conductors number 12, right, for the fixture. Now, how would you go from one odd to number number 12? What they do typically does is they fuse it. They have a fuse right here. So they bring the wire into the fuse. Out of the fuse, they put a 20 amp fuse here, and you fuse it at, um, at um, you fuse it. So if there's a short circuit or anything else in this fixture, it wouldn't take the whole system with. Any question, guys, about the lighting for the parking lot? You have the base, typically concrete, then you go to the pole, typically metallic, some type of a steel pole, or and then the fixture, the height, the conductor in the odds. Most of the parking lot guys, fixture guys, major, are odds. When you pull the branch circuit for them, it's one odd, two odd, three odds, four odds. So that's your, um, that's your power going to it. Control-wise, you can have a toggle switch, God forbid, not typically you would just toggle switch right there on the wall. That's turning it on and off. Uh, contactor is the most common, most common use, guys, for major parking lot. Um, so what, what they do is they have uh, a, mag, a lighting contactor, exactly like a, 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 a fixture, so you, you have right here, you have all your lights going to this, bunkable lights going to these. Cool. So I have, uh, let's just say I have five fixtures here and another three here, ten here, and another five here, and um, eight here, and another six here. These are all grand circuits, loads. This is my contactor, and I'm bringing a voltage of 480 slash 277 here. Cool. 48277. And the overcome fiction device guy is coming here. My overcome fiction device tying them all together. I'm going to pull a 30 amp circuit. I'm taking a 30 amp circuit to a contactor. And from the contactor, I'm going to all these parking lot lights. This is typical three phase, guys. I'm not showing the neutral here, but you can imagine that you can pull a neutral here and you go here. To these and you of course you go to these and you go to these right so I'm pulling a neutral with these so each one of these actually is burning at 277 each one of these fixtures is burning at 277 how do you control this magnetic contactor see that coil press through this coil I can interface this coil from a laptop push a button on the laptop this coil you can you capture it from right here this is will be your control system I can make um, a clock control this contactor. I can make um, a timer, anything you want to interface it with this contactor. So they call it lighting contactors. They use them a lot in major parking lots. Um, that's as good as get three pairs, three pole, four pole. They can make multiple poles contactors. Any question has any, any comments? Typically for street lights and highway lights and, uh, and major parking lots, that's one option. The other one is to have a timer, guys. A timer can have two or three pole. You can bring, you can control them separately. The same thing like the contactor, but you can have two of these instead of three and coming from one circuit instead of three circuits. Now I have three circuits here, three 20 amp circuits going, or three, uh, I mean, 30 amp. 30 amp three phase circuit going and feeding all these equipment. Can, can you imagine how much power you can get out of this circuit to feed lights? You can have 60 amp contactors, guys, feeding major like, like they do in the interstates and uh, highways. That's how they do it. They have a 60 amp circuit for a 600. They, they power them at 600 volt. 
and the, with contactors, they turn them on and off. Certain things, and of course, some of them they have, of course, the um, those are probably clock, clock, things. clock controlled timer, timers and clocks. So that's your major control from. Uh, so you have your timer. You can have a timer. You can have a magnetic contactor. You can have a snap switch. Uh, operation of the system. We talked about the toggle switch that's typically not used by one in the wall. Automated. We talked about when we say automated guys, you're talking about a contactor, magnetic contactor, or you're talking about a timer, or um, so some type of a, of a relay. A reliable. Um, better control, you can interface it with the technology versus how am I going to put, turn this uh, switch right here from my computer. There's no way I can turn that switch there from my computer. I have a magnetic a lighting contactor, guys. You can interface it with any control system that you want. Any comments, any questions about the timers, contactors? Type of lighting source, guys. Um, God forbid using an incandescent light. We studied these in details, guys. Fluorescent light, especially in Minnesota, might not be an option for outdoor because of the, the very cold temperature. High intensity discharge is kind of right now is the option with LEDs taking care of that. So that's these are the three options that you have. The rest of it, guys, it talks about the incandescent lamps, and we all know that. There are two, really, there are two types of, for the most part, in this, there are two types, at least that we understand, there's two types of lamps. This is called the heater. They call these heater. Remember how we did that one in the fall, guys? Heater, because they heat a resistance, and it glows. That's your heater. That's how you get your light. Very inefficient. I can boil a couple of eggs for you on a couple of lamps like these, so easy. The second one, they call them the arc. Arc. They spell arc right. Arc lamps. Arc, they, what they do is they create, with the heaters, they create an arc, you know, they heat the little element here, shoots electrons from one point, received from the other, so they create an arc from point A to point B inside the lamp, and they have a ballast or transformer right in this side, first pump the voltage or alter the frequency to get you the arc. Now I created an arc. Right now, the arc need to be maintained though. Then you, the ballast will maintain the, the current below acceptable level for the circuit breaker, so it doesn't trip, and maintain the arc. And by arcing, guys, you get yourself the light. But because the arc is invisible light, what they do, they treat the inside of the lamps, phosphorus lamps, or they put some type of the take the ultraviolet or whatever uh, um, light we come the non un, non visible light. They treat it to make it visible light so we can see. So these are your arc lights. The fluorescent ones is um, low intensity discharge. The high intensity discharge, of course, is the is a uh, mercury, metal halide, and high pressure sodium. So that's really the type of, of things. These are your heaters, the Edison type fluorescent. Not you just read them. We 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 went through um, a major part of them. It works on heat. Then the smarter than Chad decided to put some halogen type lamps. They treat inside the envelope that has the heater. They put some gases inside to make it better, treat it, make it make it give more lights instead of heat. They call them the, the halogen lights that you can use, come into use too. Uh, fluorescent lights, we talked about the, the arc guys that you need to create and maintain um, through the phosphorus. Life is good, long life uh, for that for that baby, um, and the voltage swing is good on them, plus the life expectancy and so forth. But when it comes to the to the outdoor light, nothing beats the high intensity discharge, other than the LEDs. Now that we'll show you, the LEDs for these guys. We said these are the mercury. We drop them first because we start having three-legged frogs. And the tree huggers like Chad don't like three legged frogs. We like the four legged frogs. So that's drop. The second one is middle halide, based on the gas that they use in it. Preferred lamp, um, high pressure sodium and low pressure sodium. Um, another two options. So typically, either middle halide or high pressure sodium is what you're going to see in the parking lot, or LEDs like we did. Or LEDs like we did. Um, the problem with low pressure sodium, guys, is color discrimination is void, no color discrimination whatsoever. 
Um, all these can be treated, like mer mer metal halide, high pressure sodium. You can treat them to get you a, a good, not so, not excellent, good color rendering. Good color rendering. Why do I need a color rendering? Because I need to be able to find my SUV, my red then or, or black SUV or whatever color that you, you're looking for. Here's a couple of um, com comparing all these fixtures with each other. Um, who said, uh, where's the LEDs here? I'll show you guys the LED that we use, a picture about it. But if you look at the LEDs, this is really nice. I like this because it compares all these types. First, based on the watt, the lumen, the total watts, um, as well as the lamp. Lamp light, this is maintenance. Lamp light is a big deal. Uh, lamp length, uh, it might be an uh, issue for certain application. And lamp load, basically taking the number of fixture, multiplying it by, um, by, by how many fixtures do you have. So, um, so that's that what I want to emphasize is this one, guys. Now, with just looking at it, it tells you the incandescent lamp is the worst in terms of maintenance versus uh, if you take uh, high pressure sodium is the best because it lives longer. So that's by looking at one one sheet like this, it will give you an idea um, which one is the best in terms of um, in terms of life life expectancy anyway. Watts, we'll get it to the watts guys and so forth, but that's the lamp. Um, the second thing, guys, uh, as I said, the fixture that we use is LEDs. I'll show you the, the, the LED one. When you put the lamps, guys, like the lamps above your head, first, to make a lighting fixture, luminaire, you need a lamp. You need a frame to put the lamp into it. You need the ballast. You need a reflector so I can reflect the light in the right location. You need lenses that distribute the light evenly so you don't see things very bright or very dark. So these are big deal to make a, a, a fixture, to make a luminaire, so-called luminaire. So these are all the parts of a luminaire that you can have. And I know, guys, we studied this in details in the past. For a luminaire to exist, you need a lamp, you need a, a, a reflector that reflects the light, direct the light to the location that you want it to be directed, and you need the lenses to distribute it. You need a frame of the fixture to protect the lamps and the ballast um, and the junction box that you need to power. So keep these in mind as you go through your fixtures. Lamp efficacy is a big deal, guys, right now because we're coming, we're becoming environmentally friendly people. The efficacy is defined as we talked about this one last quarter too as uh, the watt per, per watt, is the lumen per watt, where's my lumen? Uh, the lamp lumen per watt, the amount of light per watt. The more lumen per watt I can produce, the better the fixture would be, right? It's, uh, what do you call it, mild per gallon. It's exactly similar to the mild per gallon. The more watts, lumens per watt, the better the fixture I can use. A uh, couple of things, Chris, misleading here, and I know I didn't tell you that, guys. I usually tell the students in the past, when you have a ballast, when you have a ballast, a ballasted equipment, there is certain amount of energy burned in the ballast. So if you have, uh, for example, if you have a ballast here that's driving one, two, three lamps, each one of these lamps is um, 32, 32 watt, 32 watt guys. So if you take three times 32, so that would be, that could be the amount of watts in, the, in this ballast or not. Because there will also be some watts burned right here. So there will be some watts burned inside the ballast. So what Excel did, if you go to their site and I'll give, you, give it to you, I don't want to complicate things. What Excel did is they took all these uh, fluorescent lights and high intensity discharge and they assign a watt per fixture based how many lamps in them, based on the efficiency of the ballast. When we did the uh, when we did the um, um, come check, I didn't want to complicate the situation for you and get you that sheet that I said use what visual is giving us, which is a good estimation. But uh, so that's a good a good rule to use what visual is. But if you want to do it properly, you have to go to the in, in Excel territory to the Excel Excel Energy sheet that they give you. And this fixture with these lamps, this ballast, give you have to assign what's this amount of what's for it. Um, I can email you and put the, the document that, that you can use for it. So, my point is be aware that the ballast will consume some watts, not just the lamps, not just the lamps. There will be watts consumed through the lamps and also watts consumed through losses in the ballast. 
Lamp color rendering is a big deal, guys. If you want to see things, if color is an issue, big deal to be able to do color discrimination between objects. Otherwise, you're not going to be um, able to distinguish between them. Um, this is a, a nice, I think, a nice com comparison between um, color rendering index. Believe it or not, the worst fixture, the worst lamp, the one that you can boil an egg in it, is the best in terms of color rendering. It gives you the true, the true color of objects for the most part and the standard. Then the rest goes uh, history mercury here. Uh, of course, we don't want that one because we're three legged uh, objects. Uh, fluorescent, you can treat it, guys, to get a, a, a good color rendering index. Metal halide, since we're talking about outside guys, similar to mercury. So, what you do is you can um, um, has a cool greenish light. Uh, reds and orange will appear somewhat gray, so there's a couple of issues with, with, with it. Uh, high pressure sodium and low pressure sodium, guys, they have issues with the orange too. Um, so, for the most part, if, you're in a, if you are on the highway, as I always say, if you're on the highway, do you really, and you're driving at 85 miles an hour, unless you're a cub and chasing a car, do you really care what the color of the object next to you? You need to be able to see an object moving, but really not the color. So, some of these could be a good options for highways. Because really, if you're driving at 85 miles an hour, I really I need to see that object. That's all. I don't care what the color of the object is, unless you're chasing uh, uh, the thugs. So these could be high, low pressure sodium could be an option. High pressure sodium and metal halide, um, when treated, can give you enough color to um, to see your your car basically in parking lot and so forth. You're not going to go sit there and uh, uh, you know and sell objects under these lights. This is enough to get you to distinguish between your objects. And now with the buzzer, it's not a big deal too. Um, okay, so maintenance is a big deal, guys. When we talk about objects also, lighting fixture, you need to pay a lot of attention to the maintenance. How often they pay and how often you replace them. So life expectancy um, is, Look at this one. I want to show you. I want you guys to look at this number here, thirteen thousand hours. I'll show you the fixture that you used for us. How many hours? Anybody remember the fixture that we used, the LED fixture, the expected life? I'll, I'll flash it in a second here. The longer expected life for the object, the better. Why? Because of course you're not going to. First, you don't, don't need to buy. It, it doesn't die prematurely on you. Second, you don't have to hire Ashley or somebody else to go and fix that fixture, right? And turn the ballast. Illumination selection, you guys an expert in the illumination selection. We have the IES files, Chris. We got the IES files for our um, LED CAD fixture, and you grab these LED files, and we drop them into the parking lot, and we maintained, what was it, a one-foot candle, I think, or our regulation was one-foot candle. So you guys have you've done that. I, um, I have no doubt that you can grab in visual that we use. We grab the IES file from any manufacturer. It's international, like DWG. DWG file, you can open it in any software that open a DWG file. IES file, any software that does illumination must open IES file from different manufacturers. Open that file, get all the information about the lumens, about the fixture, drop the lumens on the floor, lumens over area becomes foot candle, and that's, that's how you get your minimum, maximum, average, and average to minimum. Here's some recommendation. I know ours, I think, Anybody can remind me what was ours? I think it was one foot candle, if I remember right, for the parking lot. Was it one? One, nobody remember, even your teacher doesn't remember. Parking lot, so here's the recommend, guys. You'll find different recommendation. Minimum, these are minimum, Chris. This is your min. Your minimum is 0.5. You don't wanna, this is enough for you to walk, not to read the newspaper, to walk to find your car, minimum. Uh, roadways, here's what to drive. Um, storage area uh, pedestrian for us to walk to on the on the sidewalks these are for the sidewalks point nine take this with uh, a grain of salt here most of these guys are IES recommendation in the software that we do press the visual if you go to the IES recommendation they get you different values that you can use <clears throat> because we are getting into becoming environmentally friendly and we need to maintain uh, the power limitation, guys, with thumb check and so forth. ASHRAE standards, that's the one I believe that we're using. 
the one that we guys are using in um, ComCheck, you can pick that one directly. ComCheck, that's the one that you're using. Uh, here's what a couple of things they're recommending for you guys. In a parking lot, press, they give you this amount, 30 watt per space, space, parking space. So you can do the parking space, per, uh, per parking space. We don't do this because a come check, guys, what you're going to be doing next week does all this. All what you have to do right now in come check is get the square foot of the parking lot for you, the type of fixture, and the, the heat. Come check will do the calculation for you based on these criteria. Uh, if you have road uh, roadways, this is what they give you storage area as well as pedestrian uh, per 1,000 um, square meter, and this is a meter. OK, or meters or feet. Any comments, guys, any questions? Four square feet, and two, this is two per feet, I see. Any question about these limitations? We, um, with, with come check, guys, we do the two calculations. We did the parking lot. We didn't worry too much about the sidewalk. I didn't ask you to do the sidewalk. Uh, we did the parking lot, and of course, we do the interior in terms of light illumination. Um, I hope by now this is your third, second project, guys, with visual. I hope you know the ISO, ISO foot candle curve that we grab. Um, so when we say the minimum right here, minimum is point, this is, I think it's point one one. That's the minimum foot candle. So every point right in here is actually, this curve represents all the points that's uh, point one one. Uh, this is uh, 0.56, so every single point on this curve is point, um, 0.5.6. Now, if, um, who's fussy here? Uh, Dustin, say, Chad, can you find me that one right here? What's the foot candle right between the two curves? If you are that fussy, then you have to kind of average these two. Um, so you went from 2.8 to 0.11. You can do interpolation. You can do interpolation to find that. There's a couple of other ways. Huh? You can do some interpolation. If x equal y, then z equal what, and and so forth. But for the most part, guys, these are these are what you want. Now, when we place them, do you guys remember how we did ours? Um, we placed them exactly. I saw foot candle. We said the the most important thing, if you guys remember. Our expert in lighting, they always tell us overlap them. When you put these curves, make sure they overlap slightly so get you a better distribution. I don't know if you guys can see that little overlap. Not a whole lot of overlap, little overlap to get you a better distribution. I want to bring to your attention, guys, you can have two heads, three heads, or four heads right on the pole. And visual was great. You guys have done it. You did, I think some of you did four. I know there's two at least. And you put them together, it will give you then, and you put your calculations on, Chris, look how they're doing the calculations on. You can you can make your calculations on any way, shape, or form you want it to. Ours usually rectangle, right? But you can do it any shape. And then it will give you, right for this end, it gives you the max, min, um, uh, maximum, min, and what else? Ab, average, maximum, min, average, and max to min. Uh, average to men. So max is the brightest, men is the darkest, and average to men is the difference between the brightest and the darkest. Makes people feel good. Any question, guys? And I know these are, we've done it, this is our second project with this. So um, if you're sleeping through that one, it's not a big deal. You guys will get it hopefully one day if you haven't gotten it yet. Okay, uh, but this pedestrian, guys. Here's a, I have a recommendation for putting, if you have a pedestrian light here, of course, obviously, you have to be rated for outside views. You bring your fixture right from here, and you put all your conductors inside it. They recommend 36 height, 36 height. Um, definitely, I wouldn't put it in Minnesota for two or less, right? Because we have snow. You want it a little bit higher so you can see it. So this is recommendation, no code, nothing for that. We'll put the pedestrian lights. Uh, now for this one, do you think in Minnesota will this will probably will be filled with snow at one time? But you have to go. Obviously, if it's a sidewalk, you have to clean it. When you do installation, guys, the last thing is about installation. There are two ways of installing the sites: either direct bird cable. One of them would be cable or conductor. It would be a UF cable, direct bird the cable. 
The other one is conduits. The other one is to put uh, conduits, um, raceways. Raceways, one thing press, if you, even if you use a direct wire cable, every time you go under sidewalk, what do you need to do? Every time we go under a building or under a sidewalk, you always have to put conduits. Why? Because it's easier to move them. To, to, you don't need to bust the sidewalk to get to the cable if it's faulted. So typically, direct buried cables, uh, you can put them all in conduits if you want to, PVC conduit. No, you don't want to put anything less than two inches underground, pull all your conductors through it from, from wire to, from uh, base to base. Um, a couple of things that you need to pay a lot of attention to, guys, and let, later when I red line for you the power on the site, I'm going to be asking you what type of conductor did you use outside. If you said number 12, Chad, you have no idea what, what parking lot uh, powering is. You can't use number 12 outdoor. At least you need number 10. At least when you get out outside the building for a parking lot, at least number 10. Bigger parking lot, as I said, they, they go in the aughts. One aught, two aught, three aught. Even though the load on them is 20 amp or 30 amp, but they go higher, higher uh, conductor. Why? Voltage drop. Because you're going longer distances outdoor. If you go, if you go based on the amp only, the size, the full load amp, you're going to end up with a very, um, a very high low voltage. The question would be, why? What's the problem if it's, if it's, uh, if we have a high voltage drop, guys? Your equipment will malfunction, die prematurely, or not work at all. If you have a, uh, I have a fixture right in here, guys. My fixture and coming in here, I started with 277 volt here. That fixture is rated for 277, and by the time I reach here, because of the voltage drop, I end up with 150 volt. Do you think that baby is going to power? It's not going to power. Because what, what happened to the rest of the voltage? It's dropped through the resistor of the conductors. Because right in here, Chris, there's all these fixtures that are tied in between, right? Pulling current. That's what they do with the parking lot, feeding all these equipments. So. The most important thing, always go for a higher conductor. If you need, um, if your conductors, if it's 20 amp circuit, you use number uh, number 10, number eight conductor outdoor. Um, number one even. Lighting control, guys, we talked about the contactors. Either use a contactor or you can have photo, photo cell control. Typically, a lot of them have a little photo cell control, guys. There are two controls for them. You can have a magnetic contactor that turn them on and off completely for, for maintenance and troubleshooting and so forth. Turn them on and off. And each one of them will have a photo cell that turns it best on, on the time. You can have a timer. Dimmer, unlikely. That I, I can't think of anything. Maybe maybe facade, the light that for the facade of the building, they want to dim it. But parking lot, not highly unlikely. Um, override switches for maintenance, um, but typically you're going to have a timer or a photo cell or a magnetic contactor or a contactor. But but here's what I'm asking you guys. When I say the contactor before, these, Chris, this is just the power side of the contactor. These will be interfaced with the contactor. I can have a photo cell interface with the contactor, drive the contactor. I can have a timer, time clock, drive the contactor. So the contactor is just to get me that huge amount of current, a 30 amp contactor, a 40 amp contactor, because you might not be able to find a timer 30 amp, you know, or 50 amp timer. When you get higher amps, like they need a 60 amp circuit here, 60 amp circuit, your only option is to have a lighting contactor and drive the lighting contactor from one of these timers or clocks and so forth. So that these will be your control part. This will be just the power where the power is going to flow. In your building. Any question, guys? Any comments? Any questions? I want to show the LED that we used. I thought that was really interesting, guys. We used two LEDs here. Here's the CAD one, and you are f very familiar with that one, right? Um, I thought um, because we were talking about uh, um, just go over here and show you. Here's the LED that you guys specified for our building. Ideal for parking uh, areas, street lights, walkways. Can you guys see that? And right underneath it, I want to highlight this electrical component for that. Uh, Chris, look at the hours that live. 60,000 hours. 
they claim it's uh, designed to provide more than, even more than $60,000. Um, high efficiency normal. Um, so there's a Kelvin that they can get you out of that Kelvin, that's the, the temperature. Um, very important topic, if you ever go there, guys, it's hot. It's this, um, this, it's called total harmonic distortion. Because they are electronic, because you are taking AC and digesting it and splitting it as a DC, you always screw up the signal. Every time you go from AC to DC, you screw up the signal. Who cares? There's a harmonic in your building. Who cares? It will heat your conductors and cables and make your fuses blow. So all of them come with this, with this value, total harmonic distortion of 20 or less. A lot of equipment require a total harmonic distortion of six or less even. So this is this becomes a big deal. This could be an offender in terms of harmonic in your building. So these are uh, a few things, guys, I thought to show you about the fixture that we use. Um, optics that they come with it. They have um, reflectors. They have this type of reflective optics for optimum lighting distribution um, to a flat glass lenses. So all these, what we were just talking about uh, in terms of reflectors. And, and, uh, and Chris, I don't know how many of you guys remember the type of distribution for a parking lot, type two, type three, type four, and type five. These are, are they shooting forward, horizontal, backward? Um, especially for a parking lot becomes a big deal. The type of the distribution for the fixture. And as you pick these, you go from one type to another, you can you can see how if you want 100% car off, you have to see it, go to a certain type. And I, I'll let you guys deal with that. Okay, so I thought these are the, the one I want to highlight from the one that we chose for our project because we did the LEDs. Chris, am I missing any? Anybody guys looked at them? Um, the CAD, the mounting, here's all the fixture. It's a CAD LED, so performance package. Um, distribution, you can have the distribution patterns that can shoot forward, sideways, and all this good stuff that we talked about. Here's my favorite press. You can burn this one. Uh, you can burn it on multi-voltage here. You can see the multi-voltage. You, you pick a multi-voltage, and then you can bring any voltage to this piece of code. Or, or you can go specify any of these voltages. You can burn this one at 480, believe it or not, 480. To, how do you get to 480? Two hots coming directly to it. Um, it talks about the square pole and round pole that comes with it, guys, and the arms that goes in it here. So it's really interesting to be able to look at <clears throat> these. Um, <clears throat> that's the mountain, the length of the arm that you put it in. Ships uh, installed in fixture, uh, NEMA, twist lock receptacle. Look at that. You could have twist lock receptacles on them uh single fuse remember we talked about single fuse double fuse guys i don't know if you were awake when i was talking about at the bottom of the pole they can give you double fuse if you're using 480 you can fuse the two hots if you're using one hot obviously you're going to use one fuse so you fuse they give you a fuse to fuse right at the bottom of the fixture <clears throat> and of course they give you all the finish <clears throat> the look of the equipment that you're installing so that's a really nice <clears throat> about the fixture that we did. I don't know if there's anything. Um, we need a couple of performance. Lumens, <clears throat> normal system watts. Uh, here's total number of LEDs. This is really number of light. Take, look at this. I have my number of light one. LED is 49 inside it, uh, the current 350 milliamp, I guess. And then you go into normal system watts for each one of these. Here's the watts that's coming out of all these um, these equipment. When you go to 63 LEDs in one fixture, and you can have uh, this amount of current that burning at, here's how much watts you can get out of this fixture. Um, so obviously it's much better than the... Uh, I mean, still this value, use it outside. Typically, guys, when you use a metal halide, you start outdoor with 250, 150, 250. Look at the largest here, 108 watt. So it's still much better than the alternative in terms of watts. When you go outside, your start point is 150, 150 W. So it's, uh, as, as you can see, it's much, much easier, much nicer than... Uh, uh, 
more efficient, the word I'm looking for. Okay, so that's one guess that we did. The other one um, was also for <clears throat> the site. There you go. That's that we did for the parking lot, uh, for the parameter light. And if you go zoom a little bit on it, Chris, because uh, you are like, I can't see anymore. And if you look at this, <clears throat> um, free general animation for outdoor use in residential commercial, obviously the parameter light, retail, and all this description the, that we used it for. This is the fixture that we use in the parameter light, as you guys uh, remember it, and you install it as an LED. Um, and I think I want to optics. It talks about the lenses and all this good stuff that we talked about. Installation wall. You can put it on wall or on arm. Uh, listing, warranty. Where's the performance hours, Chris? Is it? Yep, right here. Thank you. It's, it gives you a 50,000 hours. Um, voltage. For us being, we can't live without voltage. Here's what um, LED wall mounted. Let's see the voltages. It comes as MVOL multi voltage. You can go from 120 all the way to 277. You can't get 480 out of this baby, um, which is not bad. Uh, photo cell included or blank or whatever. So, okay. So that's basically, guys, uh, a couple of the two fixtures that we use outside in our project. Any comments, any questions? And you guys, I know you picked them up and you dropped them in the parking lot and in the perimeters, the two fixtures. Any comments, any questions? I hope that guys will kind of wrap up what, what we did in terms of lighting. I know we did a lot of lights. By the time you graduate from here, uh, Nick, you're going to be a lighting expert for the most part. With a little bit of modification. Okay, that's all I have. Any comments, any questions? <clears throat>